Hello. Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to be going around showing you my Church of the Damned inspired castle. Um, I'm going to just start right into it. I'm going to go right through and yeah, I'm going to start with the exterior of the place without going around just yet. I'll do a uh, circle around at the end for you guys to see. Um, so here in the front, I decided to divide it into two parts. On this side, we have a nice little sitting area, kind of like a garden area. And on the right side, we have a graveyard that is basically mushroom infested. <laughs> um, something else I have here, I have a lot of morning lilies throughout this castle as well. Since, well, most of the inhabitants are dead, we have a lot of skeleton priests here. Uh, just doing their own thing and of course this is locked because I don't want them unleashing uh, terror upon the rest of the inhabitants of this castle but that is okay um, there's a long walkway here which I'll uh, be kind of showing you from the inside of this area and uh, yeah so I decided to do a bunch of different things for this castle so uh, one of the things I decided to utilize was the gloom rot carpeting. Part of the reason is that I liked the green. I thought it just kind of, you know, fit a little bit more with like um, visual variety here. I wanted some round shapes since I knew that the rest of the furniture I was going to use was going to be very rectangular or square. So I wanted a little bit of contrast there and I think it kind of worked out. Um, Something you'll see a lot throughout this castle is this lighting around the door setups. So I decided to try something a little bit new here with a little visual trick where I've turned these uh, wall sconces, I believe they're called, uh, yes, yeah, so the flare sconce. I used purple ones and then underneath I placed some cabal braziers that are green. So when you add these two colors together, it kind of creates almost like a purple with white effect around the flames and I thought that looked so cool. I found that out totally by accident and I ended up using it throughout the rest of the castle just because I liked it so much. So yeah, uh, you'll notice a lot of the entryways have this kind of setup. Not all of them do, but many of them do, at least from the inside. Um, I'll be walking just through the first floor for now, and then we'll go around and I'll make sure to show you guys everything else. We have a few chairs here. We have, of course, some candles and, um, you know, this is a church. So of course you want to have lots and lots of candles. The outside of the church, if you notice, is completely overtaken by uh, growth. You know, we have lots of, uh, well, vines and tangles, as you guys can see. If we go inside this building here, kind of like a library kind of setup, where the inside uh, has like four different cases, but in order to kind of shield away from the emptiness behind the cases, I decided to add these... Um, dignity folding screens right behind them to kind of create a more 3d feel to the back of the bookcases and i think i'm pretty happy with how that turned out actually i used a lot of spider webs throughout the castle but no before you guys get your hopes up i know who you are out there who are probably wondering no i did not add spiders to this castle i am an arachnophobe so i'm not going to torture myself by doing so so uh sorry to, to let down uh anyone who was expecting that but at the same time, uh, I'd rather be safe than sorry, and I decided to add some spider webs because, well, they have better things to do than to upkeep this castle. Um, why would they upkeep the interior and exterior when they have much, much better things to do? So that was kind of the logic I had uh, behind this. Uh, I've used a lot of these gargoyle statues here uh, on the outside and added a lot of uh, really cool uh, flowers and stuff. And, uh, you know, you could see the green here. So if you look from the side, it looks like, you know, they're reaching out and, you know, this one just like reaching out. And I like how the light just kind of splashes down from the bottom there. So, yeah, as we continue our tour, um, I'm just going to show a little bit of the front area here. I decided to use um, lots of cursed saplings everywhere. These are uh, cursed saplings throughout the entire castle. It's the only kind of tree that I decided to use for this castle. Um, now if we go through here, of course this is that long hallway area I kind of mentioned earlier. We went in through this entrance, so we're going to go through this door instead. This is the main 
chambers or the main chapel, I guess you could say even. We have the castle heart in the center. You're probably wondering why are there are no seats. Well, you don't need seats if you're uh, summoning things, I guess. And of course we have the Stygian summoning circles all throughout here. We have four of them and you can only imagine the types of things they would be summoning here when uh, church is in session. So uh, what's really interesting about this particular setup is that I have a very square um, setup here. So I have a three by three square in the center. So you got your uh, nine squares in general and then up here I've also created uh, pillars on just the edges. So now we have the four pillars on the edge. And of course we have these two um, ancient symphony evolved being statues left and right side facing the center where we have the eye of Mordium. And I really like how the purple uh, kind of works well with this green here and just having this ominous eye looking around randomly, it definitely helps uh, add a little bit of a creepy factor to this particular uh, castle. And of course I used the same uh, cabal brazers and the flare sconce up on top and of course, you know, like I said earlier, I really really like that. So I'm just going to go around here. We're greeted again with the garden. We have lots of morning lilies. Over here to the left, we have another gargoyle statue. You know, lots of uh, nice detail here with the fencing. I decided to go with the darker colored fencing just for this particular uh, setup. Here, I also have a little um, hedge here. This is a two by 10, sorry, a two by 10 low hedge. And I decided to kind of use it to separate it against this. I could have used a uh, fence here, but I kind of didn't want to. I wanted something that wasn't going to, um, you know, show too much light at the bottom because I wanted most of it to look like, oh, look at the gargoyle statue, you know, purple on the inside and green on the outside. I really like this combination. Very, very nice. Um, I really like this statue a lot. So I decided to use it a couple times throughout this castle, as you guys might have noticed. And throughout here, you can see, uh, you know, some of the growth kind of creeping into the inside of the castle here, uh, going up the wall and all of that. But, uh, you know, there's lots of spider webs as well. So, yeah, someone's got to clean up in here, but ain't going to be me. We also have the altar of recollection. I figured, you know, here, like this, uh, this podium kind of reminds me a lot of like a pew. And I think I mentioned this in my previous, uh, castle walkthrough when I did the church of luminance. So I decided to kind of replicate that idea here, but instead we have the altar of recollection. And it, I remember when this used to be called the blood altar. So I decided, you know what, let's just add it back in there. It looks really cool. So why not? We have little hallways here with lots of books, so this is kind of like a, a library section in a way around the outside. Um, I will go throughout this area uh, on the way out, but I'm not going to do that just yet because we have a lot to go over here in this castle. Um, if we go into this little area, this is kind of like a nice lounge area. We also have some consumables and things like that up in this particular part of the castle. We have our blood fountain. I've been waiting to use this blood fountain for something because when I first saw this uh, as part of the Ancient Symphony pack, I just absolutely well this is actually from the castlevania pack just to clarify i was so excited when i saw this i was like i have to use this somehow and i think i found the perfect place to put it um if i go around the corner here this is not much here just a lot of um spider webs and things like that i decided not to go too too overboard here uh with that but i'm just kind of walking around to show you guys what it looks like we're actually going to head outside and we're gonna go toward the bell tower. So of course, with any church, you need to have a wonderful bell tower. And with this bell tower up here, I decided to kind of have a nice like L-shaped staircase mirroring on both the right and left sides of the bell tower. Just kind of leading down to their individual bridges. This one kind of going in an L-shape, whereas this one kind of just goes in a, another L-shape, but it's not as, uh, it's not as zigzaggy. It's more like a Z actually, or like a, a zigzag like I said it's, it's a little bit different so of course here we have the bell tower itself on the right side we have some purple going on and on the left we have some green and then of course we have some banners here so this this particular banner is called the nightfall wall banner I've used it a lot throughout this castle on the exterior on some areas and the interior in others 
I really, really like this particular um, banner. It's kind of hard to see when I'm phasing through the wall here when I'm standing behind it, but hopefully you guys can see that okay. I really, really like this particular banner. It's really cool. I decided to use prison blocks as like uh, some of the upper floor um, entrance blocks in general instead of windows. I wanted a more uninviting feel to this castle uh, to kind of reflect the people who inhabit it. And of course, we cannot have a bell tower without a bell. So, gotta ring the bell. I absolutely love this thing. I wanna say this is probably one of my favorite new pieces that they've added in V Rising. Thank you devs for a bell. I am having so much fun with it. I'm gonna ring it one more time just for good luck. Hopefully I can make it throughout this castle tour without somehow failing. Uh, and uh, maybe running into uh, some danger by accident. And you'll see what I mean in a second. If we uh, kind of turn the camera here, you can see the other side here. It just looks really, really cool, especially seeing the treetops here of these uh, Cursed Forest saplings, uh, which have now grown into wonderful, uh, hideous trees. <laughs> of course, we have some omen sofas and we have um, some rustic chairs, lots of little uh, things here in this corner. We have a book and of course, this is one of those danger areas or danger zones, as I like to call it. And we have some skeleton uh, bishops here. I, what's funny is that when you uh, summon them or you go to summon them from the menu, I think they're called skeleton priests. Like, I think most people call them skeleton priests, but they're actually skeleton bishops. So I thought that was really cool. And of course, we have a little clock here. Well, uh, not little. It's a, kind of like a grandfather clock there. And we also have, uh, you know, some blood potions and things like that. So if we happen to have some vampiric fellows join or uh, appear for whatever reason in the church, of course, we have our church wine. And of course, you know, we have nice little uh, decorations here. I One of my favorite parts about this room in particular is how I used the uh, ardent candle sconce and the ardent candle sconce is um, a really really nice uh, three-part candle holder which I thought was really neat I really love how we can change the colors of those things and I'm sure that if these spider webs were real they would have caught fire by now but you know that's besides the point so I'm going to continue we're going to go through here we have a small herb storage and alchemy storage and of course, if I open this door, I'm probably going to die very, very quickly, <laughs> but uh, I'm going to save you guys the trouble. So basically, because these doors have been closed for so long, now we have an overgrowth of mushrooms, kind of like, uh, for whatever reason, I, I just thought it just looked cool. So I was experimenting a little bit with the planting of different plants and whether or not I can fit them under certain furniture items. And as it turns out, you can actually fit them over top the tombstones. So I decided to implement that throughout the castle as well. I figured, you know what, let's add some ghost rooms in there. They look kind of spoopy and they fulfill the purpose. Uh, so I think it looked great. Also here, if you notice, I also have some invocation candle racks underneath the uh, flare sconce and this is the same color combination that i've used before but the difference is that they're swapped so instead of a green bottom i used a purple bottom with a green top so if you guys were wondering what that looked like in reverse this is exactly what that color scheme would look like and we have a couple of chairs here for anyone who just wants to chat and chill then we have a bunch of servant coffins. Of course, we need a place to put them. So I decided to arrange them in a way that was somewhat visually appealing and of course, uh, symmetrical. And uh, if we go into this room, we also have more of these. Now there's a lot of servants in this castle. I decided to also go with the, uh, for those of you who are wanting the floor tiles in this room are called Gothic tiles, I believe. Um, yeah, so these are the, yeah, Garth Gothic tiles, I was right. And uh, yeah, we also have a nice uh, throne of darkness, which I mean, if Dracula were to show up here or if I were to show up here, this would definitely be a nice place to sit at. I really like this thing. It's really big. It eats up a lot of space, but man, does it look cool. <laughs> um, yeah, so we're going to keep going. We're going to continue on our tour and go this way. And we're actually going to, well, actually, uh, before we continue throughout here, I'm going to kind of walk this way just to show you like a separate entrance that also leads to this particular room. It's the same room we just came out of, but this little hallway kind of allows you to go either downstairs and you can, you know, do stuff downstairs, which don't worry, we'll go back to the second floor. And uh, yeah, so 
we'll keep going. And I also added some benches and some bird bats on this particular bridge. I thought that the bird bats would kind of add a little bit of extra, um, not, not just decor, but just overall make it look a little bit more believable as a space. And uh, yeah, we're going to head down and we're back to the third floor again. So we're going to head down actually to the second floor. So we're going to continue throughout the bridge of this bottom part of the castle. And this is probably one of my favorite areas of the castle. We have two horse uh, hedges, uh, equine sculptures, as they are called in game. And of course, we, c we need some noble garden benches because, well, why not, right? And of course, you have another entrance leading to the second floor here on uh, this particular area, but we've already walked through there, so I'm going to actually turn around. Now, something that I get a question about a lot uh, from time to time is, how did you get the fencing to go on the railing? Because as we all know, uh, you well, maybe not everyone, but as most of you know, you can't really add fencing to already existing uh, railing. So you're probably wondering, how did I do this? Well, what I did is I went into my tray, I grabbed the invisible foundation and through placing invisible foundation tiles, then going to garden fences and then rural garden fencing, I was able to place the fences in their spots with the invisible foundation and then eventually fill it in with real foundation and once i filled it in with the real foundation in this case it is the grass uh now you have this railing and getting this railing to work is a little bit difficult because if you happen to mess up along the way you'll have to backtrack significantly in order to correct issues so luckily here i have enough practice with it that i'm not uh, completely destroying the concept as i do this and of course, we have a waygate here for our vampiric guests. We also have uh, the sconce again and the cabal braziers. This just looks so nice underneath here in this entrance, uh, this double um, stairway entrance. I really, really like how this turned out. And uh, I'm very happy with the result. Now for... The last part of our tour, we're going to actually go upstairs here. Now, I know you're probably thinking, didn't we go this way? No, we did not. This was actually um, the staircase we skipped at the beginning of this tour. And of course, we have the place where I took the thumbnail, which was right here. So for those of you who have seen the thumbnail, that's exactly the location I was at when I took the picture. And we also have another way here to kind of view more skeleton bishops. So having them all in here, I mean, with so many uh, skeleton bishops and, you know, basically people who are obviously uh, not normal churchgoers, but I guess they would be considered normal churchgoers here. Uh, of course, you know, we have a very, very interesting uh, group of people joining this uh, particular castle. So uh, one example of this would be something like um, this servant here, I kidnapped her from the Ruins of Mortium. Every single servant in this castle is from the Ruins of Mortium. I decided to uh, just basically go with the regular uh, human-esque figures, I guess you could say. Very uh, human-looking, uh, well, I guess you could say they're vampires now, but I basically filled the place with a bunch of vampires who were once servants of Dracula, so I figured... You know what where else would they go when uh the dracula is defeated where would they hide well probably in a place like this and uh yeah i'm pretty happy with how this castle turned out i, I think that um if there were things that were going to change maybe a few structural layouts might have changed in this castle but i uh, overall i think that it just kind of came out pretty nicely so yeah um what do you guys think do you like the castle do you think it's an okay concept uh, what do you think? I'd like to know in your comments below. If you like this video, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. For those of you who don't know, my name is Shilo Q. I'm a Shilo Eats Quaintly Reaper and Guide to the Underworld. I stream three times a week on Twitch, Kick, and YouTube, and on Thursdays, you can usually find me streaming V Rising. If you want to see more V Rising content, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, Sholo out.